The Yakovlev Design Bureau took a bold step in September 1991 to revive the old glories of the Soviet Union. The Yak-141 was seen vertically landing on the Admiral Gorshkov aircraft carrier of the Russian Navy. This newly designed aircraft set 12 world records from the prototype stage to its completion. However, it was doomed to fail from the beginning. There is no doubt that Yak-141 was an aircraft with great capabilities, and its design has inspired the Lockheed Martin engineers in developing the vertical capabilities of the F-35, but still the fate was not in its favour. Join us as we get into the story of Yak-141 and trace its impact that this gravity-challenging aircraft had on Russian aviation. In the early 1980s, the Soviet Navy was not as strong as the US Navy was. They also had a different approach of combat that was focused on targeting the American aircraft carrier and the using of submarines to deliver nuclear warheads rather than making new advancements. Due to this, their naval aviation was not as well developed as that of the US, and they were aware that they would not do well in a direct confrontation. At that time, the Yak-38 was the main aircraft for the Soviet Navy and their Kiev-class aircraft carriers, which were called heavy aircraft cruisers by them. However, even the designers of the aircraft acknowledged that the Yak-38 was a short-term solution. They intended to grow new technologies of naval jet. By 1975, the Yakovlev Design Bureau had a big task to build a new fighter which could escort the fleet against enemy planes. However, it was not only a defense, it had to beat the best US jets, which were F-14 Tomcats and F-18s. It was also required to be capable of vertical takeoff and fly faster than the speed of sound. The designers faced a huge challenge, but they were resolved to win. The Yak-141 was supposed to become a key player for the Soviet Navy. They wanted to have an aircraft that could have changed how they operated in the waters. The biggest problem that the Yak-141 had was how to build a supersonic aircraft that could land vertically. The designers knew that they had to satisfy both the government and the Navy with this work. They put their leading engineers on the job to figure out if it was feasible to make such an aircraft. The designers were also concerned about the political challenges that they have to face. They witnessed how other aerospace manufacturers in Russia were affected by the political change. They needed to be prepared for any changes and ensure that the design of the system could cope with any political shifts. The Yak-141's engine design was one of its most remarkable features. At the beginning, the choice was of a single engine with a flat thrust vectoring nozzle as Boeing did with the X-32. Nevertheless, this concept went out of the window and a more complex but subsequently more meaningful system was adopted. The main turbofan engine selected was the Soyuz R-79B300 afterburning engine. The unique feature of this engine was its thrust vectoring nozzle. The challenge was to make the nozzle point downwards and then back up gradually when landing on a deck, while at the same time ensuring the pilot had full control and the lift engines could provide enough power for the aircraft to hover over the rolling deck. To address this, the engineers at Soyuz Bureau designed a rotating nozzle section this segment, when turned in the other direction, reversed the direction of the engine exhaust flow. This configuration is similar to the way Pratt and Whitney F-135 engine in the F-35 works now. The other engineering obstacle was the lift engines. In the beginning, they considered using just a single lift engine that was separate from the main engine. Nevertheless, this risk was very high as the failure of the lift engine during the landing could have caused the plane crash and the disorder on the deck. In order to avert this risk, two RD-41 engines were employed instead. These engines provided the aircraft with enough power to hover. Besides, they made it in such a way to take cold air from the top of the aircraft, and thus the problem of overheating that the Boeing X-32 did not face was avoided. Though the design was complex, it was very efficient. It gave the Yak-141 great performance in flight which demonstrated that the Yakovlev Design Bureau had a high level of creativity and engineering skills. The project launched with a lot of hope and the grant was given to four prototypes. The aim was that the aircraft was in full production by the end of 1980s. However, the death of the Minister of Defense of the Soviet Union, Ustinov, in 1984, and the retirement of the chief designer of the Yak-141 project, Yakovlev, had their effect on the project. This caused the program to slow down, as the new engine was expected to be ready by the end of 1984. Unlike the previous project, the Yak-141 did not start full production immediately, but had its first flight in 1987, with the mass production planned for the early 1990s. By 1991, the aircraft had its first takeoffs and landings on an aircraft carrier deck, a great success. 
Nevertheless, this success was capped by the dissolution of the Soviet Union which brought economic hardships and the end of many military projects. Nevertheless, the Yakovlev Design Bureau kept on working on the Yak-141, financing the final two flying prototypes for state trials as they did. In the course of flight testing, 12 world records were broken, but the Soviets referred to the aircraft as Yak-141 for secrecy purposes when in actual, it was Yak-41. At the beginning, the Yak-141 was developed as a naval fighter jet. However, during the development, the requirements changed. The Navy was looking for a multi-role aircraft with anti-ship and anti-radar missiles, and also the R-73s and R-27s from the standard Russian arsenal for air-to-air -air missiles. They wanted an aircraft that would also have two external fuel tanks under wings for increased range. The Yak-141 is one of the aircraft with the use of composite materials which was a new technology for the Soviets and Russians at the time. The radar on board would most probably have been a pulse Doppler radar, maybe the same as those used in the MiG-31s. By the end of the 1970s, the Yak-141 was being developed into a very powerful naval jet for the Russian Navy. It was armed with a large number of new Russian missiles that could be used for different tasks, from engaging air targets to hitting land targets. On the other hand, in late 1991, during an approach to landing on the deck of an aircraft carrier, Test pilot Yakimov was in a critical situation. His fighter jet prototype was on fire, but fortunately, he ejected on time and is still alive. This incident became the greatest obstacle for the development of Yak-141. Despite surviving the crash, the project faced another, more significant challenge that was financial constraints for serial production. The entire staff working on the Yak-141 knew that time was running out for them. This was something that they knew very well, and that as the development cycle ended, their dream of seeing the aircraft fly might not be realized. The bitter truth was that they could not develop their plans without enough money. However, the Yakovlev Design Bureau found a partner who was totally unexpected and was ready to help to push the project with the new technology. Surprisingly, it was Lockheed, an American aerospace company, that gave more money. This cooperation probably resulted in the exchange of the valuable research and development data and experiences related to the Yak-141 platform. In spite of all the problems, Yak-141 was shown to the public at the Farnborough Air Show in 1992. The aircraft demonstrated its unique vertical takeoff and landing technology that served as the basis of similar features in the Lockheed F-35. In 1993, the last Yak-141 was presented at the Moscow Air Show. After that, both prototypes were sent to museums for exhibition and there they are still displayed. It is worth mentioning that Lockheed, with its X-35 and then with F-35, actually used many of Yakovlev's ideas for their aircraft. Even though the F-35 is superior in terms of technology and development, the way Yakovlev's innovations influenced modern aviation is amazing to see. What are your thoughts on it? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and watch the next video as well. See you again.